The boho bandana is a simple, quick, fun to knit and to wear cow. To get started, you'll need the pattern from Ravelry, 16 inch circular needles, DK weight yarn, a measuring tape, a darning needle, some stitch markers, and before you get started on the project, you should always check your gauge. I found when I did this, I needed to go up one needle size. The project starts with the long tail cast on. You cast on just a few stitches using the long tail cast on and then expand out from there using a few techniques. One of which is knit front back. This is a simple increase, just like it sounds, knit into the front of the stitch and then flip around and knit into the back. Knit into the front of the stitch, flip around and knit into the back of the stitch. You've now made two stitches where there was one. So you knit into the front of the stitch, flip around and knit into the back of the stitch, increasing your stitch count by one. Another increase technique is the make one left. For this, you pick up the bar between your two stitches and put it on your left hand needle from front to back. Now you knit into the back of your stitch. Now you've increased your stitch count by putting a stitch in between two stitches. Then make one right, you put that bar on your needle from back to front, and then knit into the front of your stitch. Again, increasing your stitch count by putting a stitch between two stitches. Here are these increases one more time in slow motion. A make one left, you pick up the bar from front to back on your left hand needle, front to back, and then you knit into the back of the stitch. And that's a make one left. Pick it up with your left hand needle from front to back and knit into the back. And now the make one right, you put it on your left hand needle from back to front and you knit into the front. A lot of people remember make one right, pick it up from the back, I'll be right back. One quick tip that might save you some trouble is to put a locking stitch marker on the front of your work to help distinguish between the front and the back. Now you can see I have this great textured pattern that started small and has increased into a nice triangular shape. Here I am on the right side of my work on the last row before I add my stitches and join in the round to start the circular knitting. So once I get to my last stitch, I'm going to place a marker here and use the backwards loop method to cast on the number of stitches the pattern calls for. This is a super simple way of casting on stitches. You're simply wrapping the yarn around your finger and slipping it on to your right needle. Loop it around and slip it on. Loop it around and slip it on. Do this all the way down your needle until you have the number of stitches that the pattern calls for loop it around and slip it on. Then you're going to put another stitch marker and this stitch marker marks the beginning of your round. So it's kind of nice to use a different stitch marker for here. Now we're going to join in the round by bringing our yarn to the front, getting ready to purl this first stitch, joining our work, and now we're going to continue just knitting in the round. You can see this starts to come together very nicely with the ribbing and the moss stitch. It's a little tricky knitting into those backwards loop cast on stitches, but it's just a small section. So just be patient and follow the pattern's directions for the knits and the purls and the increases and decreases. It all comes together very nicely. 
but especially at the markers you have to pay special attention to whether you're knitting or purling or increasing or decreasing because that might not be intuitive. So one of the decreases is knit two together which is just what it sounds like. You just take two stitches, put your needle into them and knit them together. And then another decrease is the slip slip knit. You slip two stitches knit wise and then pick them back up with your left hand needle and knit them together. Slip slip knit. You can see this makes a very nice tidy decrease row on the back of your cow. And here's a nice look at all the texture as it's coming along with the rib and the moss and the checkers. It's a gorgeous squishy textured fabric. For the bind off, you can bind off in pattern, or if you want to learn a new bind off, I'm going to demo the Haya Haya Super Stretchy Bind Off, which is a great bind off for ribbing. The things you have to remember for this are you knit the pearls and purl the knits, and you have to make sure your yarn is in place for doing that but you do that at the beginning of your stitch instead of just switching it between your needles. So follow along here. You knit the pearls and then bind off as normal, knit the purl, bind off from the front as normal. Now we've got two purl stitches, so I'm going to slip the stitch back, bring my yarn to the front to get ready to purl these stitches. Now I'm going to purl the knit and I'm binding off from the back since my yarn is in the front. So I'm just going to bind this off from the back and then do it again. Purl the knit and bind off from the back. Now I'm going to put the stitch back and then bring my yarn to the back as I'm getting ready to knit the pearls. So knit the pearls and bind off from the front as normal. And then just do that again. Knit the purl and bind off from the front. If you want more detailed information on the Haya Haya bind off, you can check out my video specifically on that. It's a great stretchy bind off. Now, after you've done your bind off, whichever one you choose, all that's left to do is block your cow and wear it. It's a fabulous textured bandana from the Boho Chic Fiber Company. I strongly recommend it as a knit and as a fun to wear bandana.